Okay, and uh, this is uh, Comp uh, 2081 Advanced Web User Interface Design. Um, and we're looking at now um, uh, using dynamic or compiled CSS. So, um, and there's a couple of tools to do that. One of them is, uh, one of those tools is called Less. You can learn more about that at lesscss.org. And another uh, very popular one is called SAS. Um, so this can be found at sas-lang.com. So the idea here with, um, with uh, SAS, which is short for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets, um, is that uh, we can do a number of kind of more programmerly things with CSS um, that uh, allow us to kind of uh, um, leverage our code in a smarter way, work a bit smarter, so uh, less uh, repetition in our code, um, and also do some other things that CSS currently isn't capable of. Um, but the interesting thing is as CSS evolves as a language, um, we're going to see uh, things like SAS and LESS inspired the CSS specification, and we're going to get things like, you know, variables and mix-ins and things like that. Yeah, uh, they will come uh, kind of uh, with raw CSS support. So, uh, but in the meantime, um, these kind of tools can certainly, for larger applications with more extensive uh, CSS um, layers, um, we can, you can save yourself ultimately a lot of time, <clears throat> uh, make maintenance easier, um, and uh, do a number of other uh, things that currently, like I said, CSS isn't capable of. So how do we get started with SAS? And we're going to focus on SAS. Uh, uh, I also have another uh, screencast on less, so you can look that up. Um, I'll leave that up on, the, uh, on this, uh, this uh, playlist for this course. Uh, we're, but this, this lesson will focus on SAS. Uh, SAS and LESS both, uh, you know, equally capable in many ways. Um, uh, you know, kind of, it's it's kind of your choice which uh, which of those uh, you'd rather go with. Um, so anyway, let's look first of all at installation. So we'll look at the installation. So there's a couple of ways uh, to install SAS. Um, uh, you can uh, download some applications, which will get you up and running quickly with uh, with SAS. Um, some of them free, some of them paid, uh, some of them, uh, uh, you know, and, and everywhere in between. Um, also, uh, we can install it from the command line, which we'll, we'll do today. Uh, you can uh, do this through Linux, Windows, and uh, Mac. Um, now, the, the, the thing to note, however, is that uh, if you um, are using Linux or Windows, um, SAS is dependent on having Ruby. Uh, so you need to install with Linux or Windows, you need to install Ruby. If you're on a Mac, you're, you're, you're kind of lucky in this regard in that uh, Ruby comes pre-shipped, comes installed uh, with Mac OS X so, or OS X. So, um, you know, for Ruby, uh, for Windows uh, users, <clears throat> you head over to rubyinstaller.org and that link here is also provided in, um, uh, in, uh, the in Blackboard, uh, so go ahead, proceed there, and download and and follow the installer there for Ruby. So once that is done, you can then open up a terminal and kind of follow along with what we're doing here. Like I said, Mac users, uh, no need to to install Ruby; it it comes pre-shipped. Linux users, yes, as well. Um, I won't cover. I won't really cover the installation of Ruby, uh, but you, you will need Ruby as a dependency, though that must be installed first. Uh, just like Windows. So anyway, having said that, let's take a look at uh, our terminal. So uh, the next bit here is uh, we need to install, I'll, I'll get rid of this for a second, we'll do that again. So uh, we'll, we'll create a new, uh, so fire up your terminal application. And in this case, this is what the terminal looks like in OS X, bash. Um, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, uh, this so we're, we're assuming already that Ruby is installed, um, and if we look in here down with uh, to install the uh, uh, SAS, which is a series of Ruby gems. Uh, then we have to type in gem install SAS. Now, likely you're going to need uh, super user, so um, 
or the administrator rights. So we're going to use sudo and uh, it will ask us for a administrator password. So uh, take a look here. We'll say sudo gem install oops, sass. And it'll ask for a password. Terrific. So um, now that uh, that is installed, uh, we will go ahead and then um, check the version to confirm that SAS is indeed installed. So we'll, uh, we'll type the command SAS and we'll pass it the tag V for version. And so we're running SAS 3.5.5 in this case, bleeding edge. So we are good to go. All right, so uh, for uh, now we have SAS installed, so what are the basics? So how do we now get uh, SAS to monitor a directory or look for a directory and watch for changes to uh, a given file? So um, uh, first of all, uh, we'll, uh, we'll download some files, uh, some kind of starter files I have for you. Head over to um, Blackboard, and if you could download SAS uh, start.zip and save that down to, uh, I'll just put this on my uh, my desktop, but, but save that, of course, to your um, uh, weekly folders for this course. Unpack that extension, and the files that are included there should have um, should have a SAS start. Uh, directory, and then you should have a sas.css, scss, uh, pardon me, um, a reset.css, and an index.html. Okay, so that's terrific. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, set up sas to monitor this directory, sas start, uh, for any changes in the files within, and then it will then parse those files and uh, for example, it will take SCSS files, so SAS CSS files, and uh, parse those, um, which are, are compiled CSS files, and then output plain old CSS. So how do we set the machine up to do that? Uh, head over here to our terminal again. Okay, and we have to, uh, Let's change change directory to uh, my, in this case my desktop. So so there is the uh, SAS start folder that I wish to monitor for changes to any SCS or SAS CSS files. So how uh, now if we go over here um, to SAS basics under the guide here. Um, we want to set ourselves up here. So what we want to do is we want to watch. Um, we can either watch specific files, so in this case we're going to SAS will watch input.scss and output that as output.css. So it looks for a SAS CSS file and what you know, uh, uh, then uh, uh, outputs that to a plain old CSS file. So in this case, though, I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to simply um, uh, watch uh, a folder, right? Um, and we can specify too, we can say, let's watch this particular folder and output, separate with a comma and say, let's uh, output that then to this folder. So we can actually specify a watch and a destination or an output directory. Um, uh, so let's go ahead and, and try that out. Oops. Okay. Mm. Put that in the back here, and we'll just kind of keep an eye on that here. So we'll say, okay, uh, SAS, S A S S, watch, and we're going to say now. Once this happens, so all I, all I've said is I've just given it a, a, a simple directory uh, to output, 
uh, is it'll output to the same directory. But I want you to see what's happened here. So a couple of things. Once now that we it's watching this SCS, it output it creates the same folder sas.css. So um, it's uh, uh, it's also created a file called sas.css.map. So it's it's mapping out uh, files to kind of keep those uh, relationships um, intact. Um, and so let's take a look now at our code editor. And I don't get the complete file. I'll open, open a new workspace here. Uh, in this case, my desktop. That's great. So I'll take a look at this. Uh, uh, open workspace. Okay, so let's take a look here. Here is our SCSS uh, file. So this is uh, simply got a number of CSS comments. Um, in it, uh, we're going to walk through these uh, these comments here and have a look and see how this works. But then you can see it outputs here to a sas.css. So it's uh, what it will do is it will parse this, uh, the sas engine will, and then output plain old CSS. We'll see how this works. Okay. So first of all, let's have uh, let's also get here's our index.html. So we have a, a simply just a kind of a a plain old uh, uh, HTML template. Uh, with just um, just some kind of bogus content. Um, also note that this page is uh, we're linking the plain old CSS file, not the SCSS file, but we're going to link the SAS.CSS. So that is the file that is output by SAS. So once it parses and out kicks this uh, out, so in effect, the end user is not. Um, using a, a SAS file, they're using a plain old CSS file. So that that compiling of the CSS from the SAS uh, is done, um, hopefully not on demand, because if you do this every time someone hits, uh, hits your web application, you're going to really, they're going to put a lot of overhead on the server. And if you do it uh, client side, um, that's a lot of overhead on the client's end of things. So what generally happens is um, the compiler SAS is uh, that runs uh, when you're developing. Um, so, and then you're outputting uh, to, a, uh, to a repository, just the CSS likely. So, but we're gonna do it kind of in real time in a kind of a development context here. Well, let's open up this page here in our browser. And off we go here. In this case, this one is on my desktop. Yours is wherever you stashed it. And then there we go. So uh, no tricks. Let's head back here. And we're going to open up uh, um, sas.scss. OK, so uh, next up here is um, let's imagine that uh, we're going to use a CSS reset or a a normalized file or something like this. So um, what I would do then here is uh, at the top, we're going to show you how to do. So we're editing sas.scss. We're going to import so uh, the reset file here. So here's the reset, and it's just a simple uh, margin, so kind of a very, very basic CSS reset. You can use this for anything. Um, I need to import this uh, file. So what I have to do, though, in order for this to work, is I have to, uh, in order to work with SAS, first things first, I need to change this to an SCSS file, and then I also need to rename it. So I'll close this, and what we'll do is we'll, um, actually, sorry, we'll, we'll open this, and we'll go, we'll go file, save as, and we'll change it to, um, instead of reset, I'll put it um, underscore reset, and I'll change it to SCSS. And this is great, because that means that, that I can now put um, SAS code inside my reset file if, if need be or not. 
Um, so it needs to be prepended with an underscore and then given the scss file extension and put that in the same directory. Okay, so that's, that's great. That is all we need to do for that. So then in our sas.scss at the top here, what I do is I put at import and simply in quotes, reset. Don't need to do reset.css or .scss or anything, just at import um, the file name uh, minus the underscore. And if I save this, okay, uh, you'll notice some, some interesting things here. We'll head over to the, open the page. Open index. And you'll notice um, the, in, in the uh, reset is working because um, uh, I now have a zero margin or padding on the body. So the text is slammed up against the side of the page. Um, you know, uh, that's okay. Don't believe me. That's cool. I, I appreciate that. So we can go into the reset.css. We could also say, um, uh, I don't know, maybe add, say, font family sans just to turn so add edit reset underscore reset dot css add the font family sans serif uh, save that oops reload the page and you'll see indeed that import is working and you can see that under sas basics you go down here to um, import so uh, they'll walk you through here, um, uh, you know, how to do that, of course, exactly what we've done right here. So uh, no tricks there. Now we can, we've imported a using SAS. Let's go and see some of the other fun things uh, we can do. So first of all, we're going to talk about variables. That, so let's go. Um, here's step one. Oops, I, you know what? It should. We want this just like in regular CSS, our add imports should be at the top before we generate any, um, any CSS. So step one, variables. Um, so let's take a look. Let's imagine that we have a, um, I don't know, a font stack that may appear several times throughout our CSS. So I don't want to write that or say, Say I have, um, you know, maybe uh, a, a list of, of uh, uh, you know, um, font families that, that will appear multiple times throughout my CSS, yeah, you know, 10, 20 times, I don't know, depending on the size of CSS. Say I only want to refer to that once or only have to type that once. So what I can do is I can write a variable name like this, font-stack, right? And then I can say, um, let's say, Tahoma. So Homa, uh, or let's say, let's say, let's do something like this. Let's say Georgia, um, and then say uh, Serif. So I want to change it to a, a Georgia uh, font, or maybe Georgia, or failing that, I want to change it to, uh, oh, I don't know. Um, what's another font, a popular font in this case? Let's say, uh, um, Bookman, cold, or I can't, I can't think of anything uh, at the moment. Um, let's look at, I don't know, let's look at our fonts. Let's see it, uh, nope, that's not what I want. Georgia, uh, let's say, all right, let's just say arguments, hey, times new, it's going to be mine, so times new Roman, like so. So, uh, you know, this is, maybe this is a very common uh, font stack that I'd like to use uh, elsewhere in my code. So I, I, I initially, I, I create the variable here and that is the value. So I'll save that. That is totally cool. And then, <clears throat> Let's go down here into the uh, into the body. So then maybe I have the body uh, selector here. 
and then maybe I say uh, font, uh, you know, font here, use font shorthand even, and then I can say, um, uh, say, uh, I don't know, uh, font will say it's 100%. Um, uh, I'll also change the uh, letting to 1.4 or the line height, and then I'll put in here simply font dash stack. Just like so. Okay. So I'll save that. Now, um, that's great. So now I want you to take a look at uh, what SAS has done to sass.css. And look at this. So our uh, sass.css, it recognizes it doesn't output the variable, it simply outputs this into the plain old static CSS. And now we have, of course, a uh, serif font. Right. Um, that's cool. Um, so that, that's also helpful. So you can imagine uh, perhaps, um, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, later on, maybe you had uh, something in the, um, let's take a look at index.html. Oh, maybe there's some code in the, I don't know, maybe we just want the, uh, maybe we just want the header and the footer to be uh, in sans serif and let's leave the rest of it uh, the, the default. So then I can go in here and I can say header footer. Save that. And then if I look at uh, my sass.css, all right, that's cool. Um, and then there's, and there, and the rest, right? And the rest of it, of course, is serif, or sans serif, this is serif. Um, but the, the real beauty of this is maybe I have a, another, you have to make sure you're editing the sass.scss, not your sass.css. The real, uh, the cool thing here is imagine maybe if, um, Say there's something else, uh, another piece of uh, uh, another CSS rule. So maybe I you know, let's head over to take a look at this. And what have I got? Um, oh, maybe the, oh look, there's an aside in here. That's cool. So let's let's target the aside. We'll say aside. Uh, maybe the aside has some other rules, and I want, also want to put font dash family. Just change that, and I can also use font stack. So save that, and then looking at so, you know, instead of typing this twice, um, you know, then it's output there for me. And there's my aside. So, uh, yeah, you know, although this seems silly now, uh, you can only imagine if we have that same font stack referenced, you know, multiple, multiple times through maybe a series of style sheets through an application. This is great because that means if there's ever a change, it's like, oh, let's, Let's change this instead. Um, I don't know. Let's change this to um, let's change this entirely. Let's say call. Let's use impact, right? And uh, something like that. Save that up. And of course. Uh, the cool thing with that, you know, and I can look at my CSS output. Uh, now nah, let's just go to, um, let's not do this the hard way. Sorry. And we can see here how our that is changed. Perfect. So let's move on. That's uh, uh, that is variables. Number two, uh, nesting CSS uh, selectors. So let's take a look at. Um, well, actually, before, before, yeah, let's let's go ahead and, and change that uh, um, nesting CSS. Let, let, let's let's look at our, our markup here. And we look at the header. Of our, and we'll see. Okay, well, we've got a couple of things. Like there's got a, there's an H1, a primary header in, heading inside my header, and a paragraph inside my header. So typically, with my uh, 
CSS, I would, I would do this. I would do h, uh, header h1, right? Write a rule in there, and then I would do header p, right? And then write another rule in there. Um, but, um, or I could, if it's the same rule, I could, I could, you know, I could, I guess I could put a group selector in there, but what if I'm putting different, you know, uh, declarations in here? So what I can do now with, um, instead of this, with SAS, I can do header, and I can open up like that. And then inside that, I can say h1. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of structuring my CSS selectors, not unlike the document object model in, or the DOM in the HTML, which is pretty cool. And then inside the h1 here, um, maybe I could uh, change the color. Um, Right, and maybe the paragraph here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I want to set this to uh, uppercase, like so. So save this, and we'll take a look at the output sas.css, and you can see here this is what we get. So here is the compiled CSS, which outputs two separate selectors. But this is. Uh, a lot easier to read and in some ways easier to code. Uh, so nesting of CSS selectors, pretty neat, uh, pretty powerful. Um, it, I mean, yeah, you're gonna be writing, it's a bit of a different workflow. You'll be writing a, a you know, CSS in a different way, but um, in, in some ways there's, there's some real, uh, there's some real benefits to that. Okay, um, now uh, I, I realize now I've just kind of uh, gone out of turn here. So uh, step three is, is partials and importing. Um, so um, we've already done this. So you, you've renamed reset.css into underscore reset.css, and we've imported that at the top. So that's uh, that's what's uh, that what is uh, termed here in SAS Basics as uh, uh, partials um, and importing. So you can you can read up on on that. Uh, but we've of course already kind of forged ahead and done that. So a partial piece of CSS is simply uh, underscore, or put an underscore in there. So kind of not unlike server-side includes where you've broken uh, an HTML template into different chunks of HTML, kind of the same thing we have um, uh, with CSS, right? So um, that's cool. You can, you can break up maybe a large uh, CSS file as well into different pieces uh, for organization and, and importing things. Uh, as we've already seen at the top of our file here, import reset. Okay, step four, we're looking at mixins now. What is a mixin? Well, a mixin is where um, we're gonna create a kind of a larger chunk of code um, and uh, we're going to reuse that in a much more elegant way. So let's, uh, let's pretend for a second we're going to, uh, uh, that we're dealing with a, a chunk of CSS where you require nasty things like um, uh, CSS uh, 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 prefixes. So let's take a look at uh, border radius, for example. Of course, you don't really need a prefix for for border radius anymore. We'll we'll do it on all the same. So border at mixin, we'll call it border radius, and you can of course call the mixin whatever you want. Um, the neat thing here is I can I can do something like this. I can pass in a value. So uh, the border radius is now listening for a parameter, which is going to be the radius value. So you know you may be up against some uh, nasty CSS where uh, you need something like this, or when the syntax is quite different for different uh, uh, for different uh, browsers. You can do this, um, and then the next one was. Uh, Dash Mozilla, imagine that. Thankfully, we don't need to use these too very often anymore. Uh, but where there are differences in syntax, so I'm on browsers, a mixing is quite helpful. So then uh, let's say ms um, border dash radius. And maybe let's 
just say in this case we had to use an opera prefix all right that's cool and then we just say finish with the w3c standard syntax so that's cool so imagine we had to at various points in our CSS, we had to, um, maybe I'll just line these up. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Just for just for formatting. Okay, so just imagine we needed to repeat this nasty block of code various places throughout our CSS. Well, this is this is pretty cool now. So what I can do here um, uh, to make this really obvious, let's put a background color on the header. Um, well, why don't we use a variable for that? So we'll go to the top here, create another variable, and call this. Uh, um, primary or let's call it very dash color and I'll say light light blue and you can use anything in there so secondary color and then down here I'll say in the header I'll say secondary color okay and I'll also put that in the footer. Okay, so I'll say uh, uh, footer. Um, yeah, I'll say, I'll say uh, let's just say uh, a header. And we'll say uh, <clears throat> at include border dash radius, right? And then say in, in this case, I want to pass in a border radius of maybe 10 px. Okay. So that's cool. Um, and then in the footer, maybe I wanted also a border radius, but I didn't want it as, as, as much, but I wanted to use that same syntax. So include a border radius, maybe only 5 px. Not sure why you'd do that, but no. anyway, um, so. I'm calling up the same block of code here and passing in a different value, which is passed to this parameter and then is output across across here. So let's save that. And let's take a look at the output SAS here. Um, nah, I, think I, I think I broke this here. Um, <laughs> I think I did. Um, let's go. Let's go ahead and fix that. I think I need to put the background color. Cut this out. Bear with me. I'm uh, new to SAS as well. So um, anyway, so uh, let's. We'll also put in here our background color. Calling up that. Oops. Calling up our variable. So that we'll save that file. Save. And let's see if that fixed that. It did. Okay, so um, so we look down here. We have our header, and we've outputted that big block of code. And the footer, we've also output that, but with different um, var values values for the border radius. So if I uh, let's take a look and see what the output is here. Oh, something broke. I didn't get my background color. Oh. Didn't break it, I just didn't put it in there. So I'll also put, um, in, I'll go into the SAS here and in the footer I'll also call, copy that. Save that. And if I reload the page, there we go. So we can see the, uh, the footer, they both, uh, this has a larger radius and this has uh, the 10 pixel up here and this has the five pixel. So, yeah, uh, that is pretty cool. Um, uh, so notice I've uh, I'm I'm just writing less code, right? Really. Um, so okay, next up, uh, extending and in, in extend an inheritance. All right. So um, 
extending, uh, let's go down here to SAS Basics here, and, and one of the interesting things called uh, uh, mix in the extending, extend and inheritance. So um, this is very, very helpful. So imagine uh, you create a block of CSS rules that you want to uh, repeat uh, for different pieces, different elements of your interface. But you'd rather not uh, type that code several times. Um, not only that, uh, you may want to add, you may want to modify that code depending. So for the most part, it's the same, but it may be slightly different for different user interface components. So uh, I'll try and kind of use something that makes sense in maybe in a practical fashion. So let's imagine if we look at the index.html at the top of the main element, I have a paragraph in here with class equal message. So, um, so imagine this is a message, but uh, this message may be dynamic. So it may produce maybe um, uh, just a regular kind of for your information type of message. It might be a success message, a caution or a warning or, or an error or something like that. So we want it to look a certain way, but, but appear differently depending on the nature of what is output here. So let's head over into our sas.scss at step five. So let's say, um, uh, so of course we have class message. So I want, uh, so no, no tricks here, class message. Open that up and let's, uh, let's style this. We'll say border, the border for this is uh, uh, use shorthand one px solid, let's use a light gray. Um, and let's put the padding one m margin well uh color let's kind of like kind of a charcoal gray color um bold font weight and we'll put the background color And we'll say light yellow. Okay, so that's cool. So I'll say there's no tricks to that. Uh, command save. Uh, let's go up here, uh, refresh the page, and there's our message. Bring this in a wee bit so you can see. Thanks. So there we go. So there's our message. So. So that's fine. Uh, th that would be our, our kind of our base uh, message uh, kind of um, panel. So let's now here say I want to create a uh, the same kind of style for um, maybe uh, say for a success message. So I'll say uh, dot success. But so for the most part, uh, I want to use all the same styles up here. Uh, but I would just want to change the color. So I, you know, I, 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 I suppose I could make a grouped uh, selector up here, but, but watch this. So what we'll do is we'll say at extend class message. Cool. So now I get all of that code up above in the dot message uh, uh, rule. And then I cascade over the background color property, and I just say um, light green. Okay, so that's fine. Save that. Um, now, of course, uh, I'll have to change the class message to success. And now I get the light green. So I, I get all the benefits of that uh, earlier style. Um, pretty cool um, and uh, so then uh, to take this even further so imagine I have um, a dot error Oops, I...
s error and maybe change this to warning So, so there we go. Um, not to say that these colors would make any sense, but uh, uh, save. That's fine, but to, of course, uh, so now you'd be dealing with, uh, so you'd have to, those all those classes are in, in place. So then depending on your application, so uh, warning, Right. Um, so really enabling us to, um, uh, and if I take a look at the output, so the, the raw CSS or the compiled CSS, go down here and you can see um, uh, what it does is it uh, simply um, adds these for me to these group selector. So it, it's actually creating as well, um, it's creating um, some very uh, smart uh, uh, static CSS. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so uh, let's head over now back to CSS and take a look at um, step five. Oops, step five. Come on. That should be step six. My bad. All right, step six operators. Okay, so let's take a look at. Um, uh, something called operators. So this in, in, in SAS allows us to do uh, some simple calculations that might make our CSS a little easier. For in this case, we're going to convert, uh, say, uh, uh, you know, some widths uh, into percentage into percentages. So uh, watch how we do this here. So let's head over into a step six operators. Actually, I, we'll look at the HTML template for this. So in this case, I have. Um, uh, I have an article element and I have an aside element. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to set these uh, side by each with a simple uh, uh, opposing floats. One will float left, one will float right. Uh, but I'm going to modify the widths and convert uh, solid pixel-based values into percentages. So let's take a look and see how this is going to work out. So we're going to say first of all we'll say uh, article. You know, be very specific that I want the role equal to be main. So I'll use an attribute, whoops, an attribute selector. Okay. Just so I, if I'm only targeting this particular uh, article, uh, and I'll do the same thing as well with my to target the uh, aside. The, with, with the role equal complementary. Make sure you're editing the S, C, S, S, S. Um, aside where the attribute uh, a role equal to complementary. Watch your spelling. Okay, that's great. So let's uh, float the, the main article to the right. And this one, the left. Okay, there's no, no trick. Actually, I'll float this one. Sorry, I'll float this one to the left and float this one here, the side to the right. Excellent. So, um, in order to do that, of course, um, in order for that float to have any effect, any value, we have to change the widths to uh, less than 100%, or they're, they're right now they're with 100%. So, the main element here, what I will do is I'll say, okay, let's say the width, and let's say I'm working with a, a, a grids-based system. Um, so I'm going to say, well, the width of this one is, is uh, 600 pixels uh, over uh, 960, right? Um, so I want to convert that to uh, percentile. So I go uh, multiply by 100%. So 
And you'll see this is indeed now a, um, uh, instead of a fixed value, this is now a, a percentage. It's, a, it's a, a fluid value. So we head over into our output. And what did this, uh, what did this output here? It put output simply that the width is 62.5%. Pretty cool. So uh, I didn't have to do any of that figuring out. And I can do the similar thing with the, um, here with the roll aside, roll with uh, roll equal complementary. I can say width. In this case, I want this to be, um, say, 300 px out of my 960 px uh, grid based layout. And convert that to percentile. Save that. Right? And lo and behold, our calculations are done for us. So pretty cool. With the, there's all kinds of operators. There's um, booleans and, and uh, uh, so different, uh, some logic you can build in here. There's a, um, so, uh, you know, there's, there are all kinds of possibilities for, um, for operators. Um, and uh, you can also certainly dig into the, uh, uh, the documentation. We'll give you, uh, you know, this is, just a kind of a primer, but you can certainly drill down and do some other more sophisticated programmatic uh, things with with these, and certainly in co combination with mixins, uh, with mixins, um, with uh, with uh, <coughs> nested CSS variables, and, and and even more. So anyway, I, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, um, keep in mind, you know, you're going to be working with a file called SCSS, uh, the SAS. Um, software compiles this to plain old CSS. So ultimately the end user doesn't get SAS. They just get plain old CSS. It just makes it easier for you, the, the front end developer, to basically write less code, write smarter code, um, and uh, uh, certainly manage larger code bases a little, uh, a little bit more easily. Um, anyway, I, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, for, uh, this week's, um, for this week's lab, uh, lab 14, uh, submit, uh, you know, either up, move this up to a server or put it in a, a Git repository uh, or, or zip it up and, and send it directly to the lab for credit for this week's lab. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye for now.